Do you know who Simon Barget is? He's one of the best backgammon players in the world. And in this video, I'm going to interview him and he's going to tell us all about it. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Let me know what you think in the comments below, what you'd like to see in future videos, and I'll work on it. If you love backgammon, you can become a member of this channel, giving you exclusive access to the most popular videos. My book, Backgammon Backgame Strategies, is available. There's a link in the description to where you get it and if you're interested in lessons please contact me via email my email address is also in the description again in this video it's my great pleasure to be conducting an interview with my good friend grandmaster from the uk simon barget welcome thank you very much very pleased to be with you i thought we did this um but we never got around to it um, i know i know things happen we did we did some other things but but I, i'm really happy to have you uh, I do a lot of different types of videos and um, some of the feedback from the viewers is they really like these types of videos where I interview people because you get to hear different things and especially uh, top grandmasters um, in the world. So I appreciate your time. Right. Um, so first thing, yeah, I hope to give you something. So I was I think I was on Nick's, Nick Blazer's channel probably about two years ago. So hopefully I won't just duplicate what I said. I think I've got some new things to say that I think you know about um, that people might be interested in. Um, but we'll go into that like new book and and just um, getting back on into teaching and a website. And um, so hopefully some new info for people. Fantastic. We'll... I'm excited to hear about that. Uh, I'd like to start with a little bit of background biographical information for our viewers, please. Um, can you tell us uh, where you were born and raised and where you live now? So um, I I often get told that I'm young, I'm older than I look. So I was born in 1975, so I'm almost 50. And I still live in London, which is where I grew up. Um, I was initially or still am a lawyer, a solicitor in the UK, which was what I was kind of doing um, for work on and off, um, not in a necessarily a sustained cont continuous career kind of way. And um, what else can I say? I mean, I got into backgammon when I was about 19. And so it's been a long, 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 um, long time long long time that i've played backgammon um so, so you're practicing you're practicing as, as an attorney or like on and off yeah so i have um I, i'm what we call a practicing certificate that uh solicitors need to have in the uk in order to be able to practice legally just expired they're renewable each year um i'm not really doing the legal job that needed me to have that practicing certificate but even when i was i wasn't doing anything um, major, I was doing sort of a kind of a less involved um, legal job, which suited me. It was called, uh, it's called document review. Um, oh. And then when it came to, I think, COVID kind of time, um, I branched out into teaching. I started my YouTube channel, found that I had just about enough students to keep me going. And um, that lasted... I don't know, till about, you know, until about COVID kind of died down for, 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 for good. And also it died down when I raised my lesson prices from 30 pounds to 50. I was only charging 30 pounds an hour, oh, which I, I think yep. is, which I think is, is, is too low for someone that's, you know, it's one, it's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's yeah, sure. But one, it's, it's a speciality. So maybe you're entitled to charge more and two, when you do that, this is not necessarily a justification, though. You're you're unlikely to be able to fill your time, all forty hours of your week with with lessons. So, from the point of view of the practitioner, you need to be able to right, right. keep it's, yourself it's going. Yeah. So I hope people can see that. Anyway, so then the lessons died down, and then I went back to my sort of document review legal job, um, and now going back to to lessons. Very good. And you're not married, right? So um, I've never been married, never, and don't have any children. I have two cats. Um, That's why you I've look lived... so young. I th yeah, I mean, 
sometimes I look at like I mean I sometimes I look in the the mirror and I I don't think I look that young anymore. But people tell me, and uh, it's very nice to hear. Um, so well, I only have the stress of, of yeah. That's, sorry. that's part of my expertise. That like I see people's faces. Right. Okay. Sure. I the only stress I have is having to let the cats in and out from the balcony. So every so often the the cat sort of pause at the door he wants to go out but then of course five minutes i don't know if you've had cats five minutes later the cat or two seconds later the cat then decides oh no i didn't want to go out i want to come back in so i don't have a cat flap so that's oh. my that's the main my main duties in in life are, are um that's uh as as difficult as it gets for me great i'm excited to talk a little bit about backgammon but before that do you have any other hobbies and interests outside of backgammon I yeah I I'm I used to I mean I don't know why I don't do it much anymore I used to ski with my with my family which I loved um just sport sporty kind of stuff not really a, 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 a competitive sportsman but um I used to love playing table tennis um I did grade eight piano i know you play the piano so i'm still a pretty decent pianist like i can improvise quite well i've been in bands um there's i've got a couple three i think three guitars here so i i taught myself guitar when i was young um never had much trouble learning music stuff i think i had a good bass basis when i started piano lessons quite young at seven years old um but i don't play that much uh piano or guitar anymore and i write i'm like uh my real backgammon isn't my main kind of in my mind is not my main endeavor i think i'm a better writer fiction writer than i am a backgammon player i don't have the same recognition it's very difficult to get validation recognition um i pu used to publish my stuff on a website which a sort of a collaborative website, but that's kind of gone a bit belly belly up. But I've written lots of stuff and it's received a lot of positive feedback. And I'm just trying to maybe get it published, mostly short stories, but I've written two novels. Um you know one of them almost one of them almost got one of the one of the novels almost got published. Um it was kind of a travelogue, a collection of short um sort of I don't know what the right word is like very like short um descriptive paragraphs from various holidays and and extended travels I'd been on and then going flitting back and forth so not necessarily linear and that almost got published which was nice um but it's a bit of a thankless task and um yeah, so backgammon is not the thing where I really seek. If 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 people are they know that feeling about seeking kind of recognition, which is a big thing that I suffer from. It's it's the right it's fiction um, that I'm writing that I would love to be recognised in some greater way than I am at the moment. For it is very difficult to write a book. It's a lot of work. Uh, so. You started backgammon when you were younger. Tell us about how you got into backgammon. Um, I remember when I was about, I think, eight. My my dad's brother uh, had two. He had two brothers. My dad's older brother, um, I think, taught me. I remember playing probably about eight or nine, and then I just didn't play until I was about nineteen. Then I spent a year off. Um, before I started university and I, I went to Israel, I studied kind of, a, it's not formal, like a little program, you know, my parents, uh, all, all that I'd had to do was go. My parents had to put their hands in their pockets. I was, you know, a bit of a spoiled kid and my parents uh, sent me off to Israel. And what did we do? You know, we, we didn't go to lessons. Um, we did naughty things. Maybe I won't mention it on, you know, <laughs> stuff, drinking, smoking a little bit, whatever. And we and we played backgammon. And and my uh I I, I we were playing we played chess, but my friend that, that I shared with was called I'll say his name is no Jonathan S. Fandy. You might have guessed that's an Iranian um a, a name of Iranian. And so he was there and um we immediately clicked. I shared a room with him and I think he brought a backgammon board with him, or he just bought one from the 
the old city. There's an old city in Jerusalem and the Arab quarter so, sells loads of these kind of, you know, the Turkish style, awful boards. And um, you don't like those. <laughs> I hate those. And then we, when we, we started getting everywhere. There were like 32 people on the program, like 16 girls, 16 boys. Most of the girls weren't interested, but we, a lot of the boys, we managed to get like 10 of the boys like playing tournaments. So we used to play, you know, the back that you have these long coaches and you have the two exits, two entrances. The entrance is usually at the front and the exit is kind of midway by the back. So we used to, there are these stairs at the back and we used to, whilst the coach was moving, someone would sit on the stairs. So the back gun ball would rest on the floor of the bus. If I've described this correctly, I don't know if anyone can picture this. So the, the back gun board is on the, the, the floor of the bus and someone's sitting on the stairs so that they can be at the right level. And the other person maybe is perched on the seat that's opposite the, the stairs. So we used to play tournaments like that, going from being ferried to Elat or wherever it was. That's what I remember. <laughs> First so, and then I just got jellyfish and I was like fascinated. And, you know, most people know that jellyfish is the forerunner to snowy. And it was like, oh, this is, it tells you every single move. I'm like what? That's crazy. Right. So yeah. how did you improve to the level that you're at now? Just gradually, I suppose. I was not very good when I was 19, but then I think by the time I was 21, I got really good. Like I was about four and a half PR, but then it stagnated and then I didn't get better for like years and years. I would say until about, I only made serious improvement when I, in 2016. So it's kind of interesting that it took that long for me to get out of that four and a half sort of level. Um, it took, it took like, so from 19, let's say 1996 to 2016, I was playing roughly the same level and I wasn't really improving as far as PR was concerned. I was learning lots of stuff, but forgetting other stuff and kind of, right. there were still holes in, in my knowledge, in my game. Were you studying as much as you are now? I never had focus study, but it was always like I'd spend a lot of time in front of XG, yeah, for sure. Right, I mean, it's right. never kind of regimented. So for the viewers that are watching, how would you recommend that they improve? Say someone wants to get better and maybe they're an advanced player and an intermediate player. Yeah. Uh, well, you asked me this before on when we did the backgammon with Grime Masters series. Um, this, this question is a little bit different because that one was focused from getting – from a master level to a grandmaster, let's say you're a novice or you're, 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 you know how to play. So you're perhaps an intermediate player. How do you get to the higher levels to an advanced player or a master level player? I have to say, yeah. I'm, I can't remember exactly how I got from that level. I do remember shout out to Kit, Kit Woolsey, that one of the, one of the transformative books, maybe when I was at an advanced level was new ideas and backgammon. It has an orange cover. Yeah. And all the other books were kind of, uh, I'd read them and I thought they were quite good. I think I had 501 problems like yeah. Bill, Bill Roberti's book, but it was Kit Woolsey's book, which um, I don't know why I can't remember exactly what, what was in it, but it was, it, it was, um, it was, it made a big difference to my, to my, understanding or my way or my ability to assimilate information or something i'm not really sure what but other than that i can't really remember the journey from let's say novice to ad advanced i think i just played in chouettes or i played money games even against friends who weren't really in the backgammon scene and just lost constantly and i used to like you know have those like really competitive like thinking that I was way better than them, but I was still losing. I was still losing. And I just carried on like just losing at some point. I must've figured out that, or, or I, maybe I was continuously figuring out that I, I, I was still needed to get better, that I knew I had 
maybe an ability, but I wasn't really at the level I wanted to be at. I feel um, like shuets in general are a good way to improve. Um, however, when I was playing shuets, it was completely non-consulting. So there was a lot less to learn. But when you have the consulting shuets after the cube is turned or whatnot, depending on your rules, you can learn from other people in the shuet and they say, okay, I want to do this. And you ask them why, and you, you can learn a lot that way. You can, you know what? And I, this is not the answer you're looking for. I think I was one of the worst shuet players because I always thought I was the best and I wasn't, and I, I never listened. I always just made, if I was the captain, I always made my own play and completely ignored everyone, which just uh, alienated everyone. But I think where I learned was playing head to head against like friends, for, a friend from school, and there was this like real intense rivalry and it, and he was still beating me. And like I said, with that guy, Jonathan, who I used to play with in Israel, it was just, I couldn't, you know, we used to play for, I don't know, like not very much. Like, uh, I think it was back in the day when France had, it still had its own currency. So we used to play for like maybe a franc a point or something, which wasn't very much, but he used to just beat me all the time. So I just carried on. Like I, I had to carry on until I got to the point where, I was not beating him anymore because I just was so deluded that I, I I thought I'm better than him, but I was not, I was undeluded enough to realize that if I'm losing, well, I can't be. So I just carried on, carried on, carried on until I got to the stage where I wasn't losing anymore. I think that's what happened between like, the, the years were like 1993 to 96. And then um, I started going to, to the, the federation or the association which was um, existent here wasn't, you know, the UK BGF now. It wasn't the UK BGF. It was Bieber, British Isles of Backgammon Isles Association, of Backgammon. started by Michael Crane. And I used to go to tournaments. And that was the first time it was, I, I, um, I was winning. I wasn't, I was suddenly like, not only was I beating my friends maybe, but I was actually um, winning. But as as to what how I improved, I'm not exactly sure. There wasn't a can't re, either. I can't remember. Or there wasn't a specific way. Yeah, every, just, everyone's just different. Books, just playing books, just putting positions into jellyfish, printing out positions, of course. Yeah, yeah, that's that's how it was for me. Like reading books and studying with XG or Snowy. Um, at the time uh, so nowadays do you play tournaments shuets or what do you usually do so um it's funny i don't really play much i i go like roughly two or three tuesdays a month to the shuet in st albans which i really enjoy um and other than that i don't like to play too much i don't like backgammon tournaments because I don't like to go and then be knocked out and then not be in a, not have anything to do aside from the fact that, you know, you've just lost and you've lost money. Um, I don't like to be stuck there in some place. You know, of course, if I was in Miami, it sounds, it's not so bad, but you, you're still kind of in this cocoon. It took me quite a long time to realize it wasn't, I it can't, there were lots of downsides to it. There are lots of upsides. I mean, I shouldn't be saying, I should be saying the other, the, the promoting tournaments and they're great, but I kind of think I have my fill. So I don't go to too many tournaments and that's pretty much why I started up the, the YouTube channel, but so I could play on my own terms. And when I stream, I tend to just um, stream like sp completely spontaneously if I feel like it. Now, I don't know. I think uh, I have that kind of type of character. I'm starting to realize where I just, I'm very impulsive. Of course, if you if you want to go to a tournament, you have to plan it. You have to book the flights and you might want, not want to play backgammon when, when it comes around to it. Or, you know, when you 10th of December are going off to California, you might like, oh, oh, I've got this tournament, but obviously you're going to be excited. But I just like to play when I have the urge. So that's what the YouTube channel allows me to do yeah speaking of your youtube channel uh when i started this youtube channel that's becoming more and more popular um there were some people that inspired me like it yourself 
Dan Rovira, Nick Blazier. There are a number of them. I'm sure I'm missing. Just, just, Justin. So Justin, Justin I think, Noel, was the first. Justin Noel, and uh, fantastic. And of course, there were the other ones like like Backgammon and Galaxy and so forth. But it's fantastic, and it's a great way to uh, promote Backgammon. So I, I really appreciate that. And you know, before I knew you, um, I saw all of these videos. So I'm going to pull this up. Are you able to see that now? I am. So this is your YouTube channel. Now you're well over 1,000 subscribers. So I'm Well, yeah, you know that. who you know who I owe that to, don't you? <laughs> well, you had you had like 999 and you needed a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're struggling at the 1.02. I still lose like a couple of subscribers. Um it's it, difficult. It, it, it's um you lose people don't realize you don't just gain you lose this is true <laughs> it's like backgammon <laughs> it's like backgammon people uh, are like fuck not this guy again and they're like unsubscribe we all know that feeling you know i've yeah, unsubscribed and I from think people there, there are people that, that like maybe scrolling through youtube and they may say oh this looks good but they're not really interested in backgammon so then they'll unsubscribe uh but so when did you start your youtube channel why when and why. Oh, when when i thought i explained why but i can re-explain so but uh, when? when i think um roughly 2019 like march april something like that and and what made you decide to say hey i want to do a youtube channel about um that? so i think playing on galaxy you look at these that go if you scroll down these videos are obviously galaxy when it first came out right. i just thought oh i can play backgammon galaxy and and have people watch me that's that I just thought, well, that makes it even better to be able to do it in front of an audience. What what are your favorite types of videos to do? I think still that where I, I stream where, when I'm playing Galaxy. The live yeah. stream ones, right? What, what yes. seems to be the most popular in terms of viewership? Well, they, the viewers don't really have much choice because it's mainly the stream. So these, are <laughs> the, the, if you see the last video I did was from two two years ago or three yeah. oh yeah this was a two but, years but the live streams are the newer ones. the live streams are like the only ones i do really um so to, 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 spaceship yeah so I, just firstly i mean i don't know if i hope the, the 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 this lovely little spaceship thing and the design that's all from james mcnaughton from oh. paris vido so that's his channel he's fantastic um, and he's i've spent time with James in Paris and I went to one of his BMAB tournaments. Um, and then, yeah, if you scroll down, there is some stuff like I kind of, uh, did some different stuff, but it's mainly the streams. Um, so I really enjoy these streams, uh, but for the viewers, you're playing on galaxy or heroes or some online platform and you kind of go through your thought process and then analyze it. Right. Right, so I'm only playing on Galaxy, never on Heroes. Okay, I thought um, I saw Heroes one before. Uh, no. True, sorry. Oh, I, um, the, you're oh. right, so... That's fine, um, it doesn't matter. Sorry, there was just a noise. Um, yeah, you're right, so it's, the UK BGF has a, a league, and yeah. it's incredible. Like, there are about 45, 60 divisions, I've got no idea how many... So every so often I would stream um, uh, my yeah. UK BGF league matches. So if you see, yeah, UK BGF league yeah. division two, Simon Bargett, Mike Grabsky. Um, so yeah, you're right. And I still do that sometimes. Very good. Very good. So that's the YouTube channel. And now I, I saw you recently created a website for your backgammon let me pull that up here are you able to see that now yes i can see yes of, of course yeah okay so tell us about this i'll let you guide me guide us through well i mean the, clearly it's it's a it's a way of um people getting in touch if they want lessons so i had the youtube channel but I think I wanted to set out 
and you'll see not on this necessarily this page, which is the about me, but the the second or third page, how I can help. I just wanted to set out, even for my own benefit, why and how lessons are going to help someone. And and I found that as I wrote it, there are lots of things. I don't know if you'll be a, yeah. So oh. how I can help. Okay, so here we go. And so I ended up writing, and and it's it it still. It is still a work in progress. It's not perfect yet, but I just set down a few things. I, and I've got four arbitrary distinctions, beginner, intermediate, advanced, expert, and world-class. And I found that I uh, there are lots of things that you can, I mean, you can frame it in a million different ways, but and it depends on the terminology you use. But there are lots of things that you can say, oh, well, I can help you with holding games. I can help you with anchors. I can help you with pay now, pay later. I can... And so I thought that it would be helpful to set that out so that people could actually see, oh, yeah, maybe this person knows what they're talking about and maybe they can help me with specific areas. So if people want to just, listen, they just they just fill us out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And people do actually fill it out. It's amazing. I don't know. I'm not set on that that very stock image of the not the non precision dice at the bottom is a bit ugly a friend of mine helped a friend of mine helped me with the with the website so i think that's just a free uh, yeah that's image a good one. but those uh, dice the nightmare dice and then um this is the youtube one which we that's uh, just oh, that's true yeah that's just one of the videos i don't didn't know how to to link the whole channel so i i i gave up and i just linked one of the one of the videos i'll help you out i have a, some background in web design yeah i you can do everything every but alex ashagin can do everything viewers I've he does learned, everything he's one of those people let me explain to you how how i do that there's there's this new website available called google and you just ask it whatever you want and it'll show you how to do it right but there's this new quality called patience <laughs> yes. and some people have more of it than others <laughs> okay and you can see for example there i haven't i haven't um what's the word articulated the typeface uh i haven't that the spacing is incorrect and the font is too big but you know i'm i'm i can be a bit slapdash but yeah so this is uh it's true i am writing a book i've been writing it for way too long it's basically written but it's the hard bit is 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 um like rewriting it to make sure that the information that I, I'm trying to put over in the book is intelligible. And the book is quite, quite advanced. So that's the the, the task of making it intelligible is quite a struggle, as yes. we might well find out in a second. Nowadays, people are playing a lot more matches than money games. So it's very important to understand uh, the strategies in a match, especially with, with the doubling cube, because it varies depending on score, uh, especially as compared to a money game. So I right. wanted to, you, there was a position uh, from the book that we wanted to discuss here. So right. let me, let me pull this up here. I will go there. Okay. So here we go. Right. Okay. Are you able to see that so, now? I am. Can I just talk? I'll be try and be as quick as possible and talk about this this position. Yeah, just just a brief introduction. This is the beautiful a brief introduction. Uh, yeah. Casio board by Backgam and Galaxy. The XG board is made by Rain. He makes beautiful boards. I, I always he try does. to recommend his. Um, so you're going to discuss this. Of course, you're playing the white checkers at the bottom, the opponent black um, okay. at the top, bearing yeah, off I, on the left. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So in the book, I start by setting out six early game positions. And this is the first one. It's arbitrary. I mean, perhaps I shouldn't have chosen this one. Um, and we'll see why later. But this position is produced after a sequence of uh four five for black it's difficult to see some people will, might struggle with this but i'll say it anyway black rolls a five four and splits to the five and plays 12 to 17 yeah and then white rolls a double three and makes the five and the three point and which will hit the man on the five point and now black has come in with a three one 
and it's correct for him to play bar 21 or play one to four. So I'll come in on the one and then split to the four point. And now it's White's turn. And the question is, and which is proposed by the, the, the book is all about is um, when, when should you take or pass at certain scores? So Alex, um, I think this is a money game. I'm going to ask you what you think the correct doubling action is on both sides. So is this a double? And if it is, is it a, uh, a take or a pass? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, sorry, it's a little hear, hard to hear you when your hand is in front of your mouth, but, but I heard you. Um, I sorry, should, can I, I, shall I repeat? No, no, yeah. we can hear you, but, but this is, this is better. I've studied these double five and double three blitz positions. So this is not quite a double for money at least, but it's close. Okay. And do you want to, um, see if you're right? Okay. Yeah. Let me put by that. putting in the. So here now we see the analysis. Uh, this is money. Yeah. So here's the analysis. So, okay. So this, like I said, is a bit of an advanced book and, and everyone's at a different level. So what I'm trying to, to draw people's attention to in the book is when we see, I don't know if you don't have any arrows, double take, and there it says plus 0.469. So that means that if white doubles and black takes, the position is worth 0.469 to white, right? Correct. Yeah. So we're going to kind of try and keep that in mind. 0.469, what does that really mean to us? Well, it's like one would be a pass. So it's way, 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 way better than passing for black. So this position is worth 0.469. Now let's change the score and make it, and so just to reiterate, the book is only dealing with seven point, the seven point match. So let's make it that the score happens to be um, black has taken a lead. Black is leading in the match, let's say, uh, black's leading 4-1. So we know that we say that <laughs> the alternative way of putting that is that white is six away and black is three away. Like oh, we can so. do that. Okay. So what, what, again, I'm saying the book is quite advanced, but let's try and this territory has been very well done by Nick Blazier in his book, Match Strategy, but, but broadly we know, and I think you'll get this right. Is this a double? Um, and if it is a double, is it a take or a pass? Obviously not a trick question. It's quite an easy. Right. So, oh, you're asking me or you, you want to? I'm asking you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just right, right. So, so here you, you want to be a little bit more aggressive. A doubled gamut is, is valuable for you because it'll get you right. four points. It's hard, it's hard for the opponent to turn the cue back to, to four because at three away, four points will get you an extra point that you wasted and should the opponent ever redouble to four it'll be an automatic redouble to eight so there's a lot of cube leverage right okay and here will be a double but it's still take right okay and you you can make a guess as to okay all right fine that's 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 a good enough answer oh there okay do you remember do you remember what the double take equity i wanted to tell people to concentrate on for, for money was do we remember roughly what that was the just the figure 0.49 something it was 0.4 i know people some people are going to be oh god Seven. what's all this numbers Arr, i don't like numbers but x3 is all about numbers so it was 0.47 let's say if we go back to the six away three away which we just had on the screen what was it 0.766 isn't that like such a that's a huge difference so what i'm trying to get through in the book is not just um which scores are um are the most sensitive which we probably know is going to be four away two away i'm trying to rank all the scores in order from the ones that produce the highest equity after a double to the ones that pr produce the lowest so we notice here which produces a higher equity the money game or this score 
of course this score of course this score and how much how much difference is is there in the equity almost 300 million points 300 that's a lot for people that play backgammon who knows what exactly that means but it's a lot we know like if we make a 300 blunder that's like oh my god so that's significant is it a pass no i mean if 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 you pass this would your friend tell you you're an idiot yeah he would he like you you've made a stupid pass it's like a huge take okay let's go to um because we haven't got that much time. I want to go to four away, three away. So that's going to be the... So score... No, black is going to be leading four, three. Right. And white's going to be on roll. What What? What do you think happens now? Yeah, so I just wanted to show people... Because some people ask me how you do this on XG. This is how you change the score. And if you go here and you right-click, you can change from absolute score to away score. Yeah, so now that's... you're trailing four... Now you're trailing four away three away so in general you want to be much more aggressive let me clarify you we were always trailing so we're still trailing but we're trailing four away three away we were trailing right. six away three away before so now we're trailing four away three away but we're still trailing things start to change when you get closer to the end of a match so it it kind of changes from money i think this will be a stronger even a stronger double but Right. Still, I would still take. Okay, let's go. Let's see. I think you're right. Just, it's close. Oh, look, look at it. You know, I say sometimes I'm right. I say that to my wife. She doesn't. But you're. Oh, okay. You're right, but you're kind of. No, you did. You did say it was close. So you're absolutely right. Look at how diff different. Let's look at that double take equity. We had four seven, for money. 0.47 we had 0.7 whatever it was for six away three away and now we've got 0.95 so yeah you could say oh yeah it's just a take it doesn't make any difference but look at the difference in equity right and that's what my book does if you pull up the next <laughs> could you pull up the next sheet please alex the next the next slide oh that the slide, slide that you wanted to share that compares the scores yeah, that's the, the, the this is the root of the whole. If people don't understand this slide, then the book is going in the bin and will never be produced. But let's see. Right. <laughs> so let me this. It's not that immediate. What for these are the equities ranked from highest to lowest for that position we just looked at. So can we go to money? I don't know if people will see the arrow, but if we go to the dollar, that's the that's the equity there. It was 0.47. If we go to six away, three away, it was 0.76. Yeah. If we go to four away, three away, it was 0.96. Now, what I'm trying to do here is, and in fairness to me, all, in my book, it's all color coded. So the, four, the, the away scores are all color coded to try and get us to memorize them a bit better. Let's, if we look at, let's say, three away, three away, and we think, oh, yeah, when you're three away, three away, you've got to be aggressive. No, not in a gamish position. It only is 90 millipoints higher than money. Nothing. Look at where seven away, seven away is. People might know this. It's about the same as money. Five away, five away. Even scores. Scores where you're not trailing are going to be scores that produce lower equities than scores where you are trailing. So if we could just concentrate on the top of the table, four away, two away is always going to be the most sensitive score. And I'm I'm not going to go too much into the reasons because they're kind of obvious. Um, and you want to tell the viewers what the color coding means so that they understand. Oh, oh, thank you. So the red people might have guessed means that it's a pass. The equity is above one. Um, and that just to be not to be pedantic, but the equity this is from the point of view of the doubler. So that's why it's not negative, it's positive. It's 1.24. Um, the blue indicates that the um, the position is a proper double. So if we went back to the dollar, the money game position, it's in white. It wasn't actually a double. So I'm not sure if I will keep this position in the book because it's a little bit incongruous to have a, 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 a situation where the, the position isn't even a double for money. So it becomes a double at seven away, six away. What I want, just if I've got a little bit more time, is to highlight 
the four, like the fourth score, the fifth score, the sixth score. No, um, do you want to go back? Shall we go back to the XG? No, no need. Oh. No oh, need. Okay. No need. I've just got all these. Seven away, two away is like a, the first three scores. We we are always going to be the most sensitive. Hopefully, if people don't know. Four away, two away, four away, three, three away, two away. We can bank those. We can remember those, the, like the triad or the the trio of most sensitive scores in these gamish positions. But then we've got scores that people kind of don't really know about and they don't think about. We've got seven away, two away. So what what's the commonality? The two away, we must infer that giving our opponent a dead cube, like I said, this is not rocket science. And a lot of people know this, but some people don't aren't fully aware of it giving people a dead cube is going to be the thing that is the worst for them and therefore the most positive for us as in if we're trailing and our opponent is two away and we cube them to two then that cube the fact that they can't use the cube is so um um material to us and so useless to them that it's going to produce a higher equity for us so fourth score is seven away two away fifth is six away two away and when we have a three away score, so it's not a two away, but it's still, what have we got in the seven away, three away? We've got a difference of four points between us. So we're down four points. What, what do we infer by that? That trailing is a big, big trigger for generating high Q value, high, high double take equity. So we've, what have we inferred? We've got, if, if the cube is dead or not, the differential between the trailer and the leader and then if we go down, it's consistent. So we've got, again, five away, two away, a def differential of three, and a two away score. So all the two away scores are basically in the top six. And then we've got another three away score. And then when we go down, well, we've got a little bit of an, a difficult, this is seven away, four away is pro probably needs attention on its own, but we can see that the four away, if we cube someone that's four away, there's still a little bit of value that the cube has for our opponent. And then we've got scores down there where it's even scores, four away, four away, so we're not trailing anymore. Um, but can I just compare one other thing? You're being very quiet. I want to compare four away, four away, and three away, three away, right? Yes. Four away, four away, three away, three away. Maybe you can explain, because I'm sure you know just as well as I do, maybe not even better. Why are the, what, what, Why is four away, four away, higher up in the table so why does it produce a higher equity after doubling than three away three away well in the gamish position at four points at four away puts you out perfectly whereas you waste the point when you're at three away right right and 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 there's less that, value of owning a cube when you're at four when you're at three away than when you're at four away right right there's less value um there's some, there's some nuances because there's actually more value to the four away. If you if you're four way four way and you cube the four away guy, he's got more value in the recube. That's what but, I was referring to. Yeah. Oh uh, right. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, but in any case, we see that being an even number of points away is going to produce a much higher double take equity for the doubler than being an, an odd number of points away. So if I want to recap, we've got how much is the cube live or dead for your opponent when you cube? Are you leading or trailing? And what is the score differential? And it's very simple. When you get, uh, there's one or two more factors, which I've completely forgotten. When you get those factors at the forefront of your mind, then you can basically extrapolate almost any early game position and remember this list of um, you can start to get clear on which equities um, are exactly, sorry, which match scores are exactly where. And when you're playing a game, you can be much clearer, as in a seven-point match, whether or not you should be taking or passing at a specific score. And that's what I'm trying to do in the book. Um, I don't know whether you've got a list of all the other scores there or whether we we're going to, I've got six other positions, and you will see that, the pattern is consistent amongst all those positions. So the scores, the ranking of the scores pretty much stays yeah, I, the same. That that would be, I don't want to give away your whole book. I want people to buy the book. 
<laughs> that's the book. Yeah, that's the yeah, book. Yeah, but in the interest Pretty much. of time, we'll we'll kind of conclude this. But this is this is outstanding because when people watch this, they know like what kind of a caliber player you are. So when they're taking lessons, they know they're taking lessons from a really top grandmaster. So this, this, I believe, you know, I have some, I think we all have our strong points as players. This is my particular strength. Um, kind of memorizing numbers, match equities. I've been always been particularly good at that. There are other parts of my game which aren't so strong. So I'm hopefully giving something that I've got a de pretty decent understanding. And I'm hoping I haven't missed, conce miss, conceptually missed huge parts of the puzzle. Um, so yeah, hopefully I've got something to give and that people can pick up on. Um, and hopefully it hasn't been totally reproduced by other backgammon authors or content creators that it, it is slightly more, I feel let's compare it with the obvious with Nick's book. It's, it's much more specific and detailed. It, it tries to look at every single score. I think um, I think this is outstanding because there are different ways of looking at it. And the, the more different ways you're able to look at it, the better you are. And what I tell people, like at least now, uh, when they're trying to learn match scores, of course, when your book is available, that will be uh, at the top of the list, too. But of course, Nick Blazer's book called Adjusting to Match Play. A long time ago, there was a really good one by Kit Woolsey, uh, How to Play Tournament Backgammon. And also a much more technical one by Dirk Scheman, the theory of backgammon, which well, is there, there's also about. Mitchie. Mitchie is planning. Yes. I mean, he told me this a year ago that he was doing, and I know everyone else knows that it's about the five point match. So it probably will be very similar. I haven't like spoken to Mitchie. I mean, where everyone's entitled to produce what they right. want, and of course, Mitchie is a much more well known player than me and a much better player. But still, I'm. Um, there's as you you know you've written a book yourself there's enjoyment in for your own personal satisfaction in setting out on paper what you what you've gleaned and what you've learned and there's a there's a lot of satisfaction in that i don't know if you know about five or six months ago michi was here in los angeles and he gave a seminar on the five point match so it was like a brief brief synopsis of the book and that that was fantastic his books i feel are much more towards everyone from the novice player to the advanced whereas these like yours and mine are much more technical and yes he was, yeah, he was it's basically going through the general things like if you're four away you want a four point battle is what you call it so you want a double gamut if you're two yeah, away yeah yeah so he talked I, about I go and and with deference or uh, it with maximum respect to Mitchie, i can't do that i'm not good at at, 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 at tweaking to a particular audience when i do stuff i have to really monitor myself and dare i say this also in lessons i have to make sure that i'm not just teaching myself i have to really try and curb myself and not make it too almost as if i'm repeating what i know to me i need to and mitchy has an incredible talent uh, to get his information over to to all sorts of levels so i'm working on that and 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 i'll that's what i'm trying to focus on in the book i won't do anything print anything until it's like at the, at the very least barely intelligible like it, it's still too difficult to access i feel it needs work it needs a lot of work on the accessibility I think you definitely articulate yourself very well. Uh, of course, uh, I've had the pleasure of meeting a lot of people like yourself and many others uh, through this YouTube channel that I would otherwise never have had that opportunity. So it's it's given me like I think backgammon gives you an opportunity to meet people all around the world. And I've had you several times and the viewer feedback has been that um, they really enjoy your analysis. When you talk, I remember specifically there was the one match against Mark Olson where it was that one position we talked about for like 20 minutes, that, that doubling pos position. Um, but even, even on the more recent ones, um, people really enjoy your analysis. So it's, it's really right. outstanding. Th thank you very much.
Great. I'm happy to hear that. Um, great. So that was that was a great, great discussion about a lot of different things. And I'm excited, you know, people are going to start getting lessons and they're there. You're going to start getting a more booked, I hope especially hopefully if... yeah yeah you never you never know you it's uh i think it comes in waves the interest in 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 these games it sort of wanes and what's it ebbs and flows yeah but, but i think all the things that you do like making youtube videos i mean people contact me they see their my youtube videos or you write a book and people talk about that or you give lessons and things like that right 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 exposure yeah that's fantastic yeah. that's fantastic it's been such a pleasure having you on again I, obviously you have an open invitation to return and hopefully it will play more matches in the future uh do you have any final comments before we conclude the interview no i mean just you know just to say like i said i thank thanking you for um you know you I tell viewers that you reached out to me completely selflessly to just to help me with whatever it is getting a few more students or and I didn't even discuss that with you and uh, so it, it's just um, it's kindness beyond expectation really so uh, you know I also I, like I said I've said to you off camera I feel a little bit gu guilty because <laughs> I haven't done anything for you I don't think well but, you uh, don't know that but you, you never know yet you never know you never know. It's uh, it, it's probably going to happen. But uh, well, so thank you. Yeah, you. I I don't know if I ever told you, but maybe similar to you. When I grew up, we played backgammon with my father and my uncles and things like that, and it's been part of my culture growing up. So it's it's something that brings me a lot of enjoyment. So when I uh, watch you, when I listen to you, I learn. Um, so it's it's really a pleasure to be able to have you and a variety of others. I have a lot of like board makers that come and it's just beautiful. They, they show me their boards. It's just yeah. like a kid in a candy store. Yeah, well, you do a good job. So people have, you know, they're happy to come on. Well, very good. Thank you again to my good friend Simon Bargett. Is this, am I pronouncing it right, Simon? Yeah, I I don't like. Is it terrible to say? I I've got a good friend Simon Sharma, and uh, that's his Sharma is not his original surname, and I don't like mine either. And I'm I I I don't know many people that change. So it's Barget, but Barget. Sounds, yeah, I'd like to. Ch Sorry for the long answer, but I'm. If I have the courage, I'll just change it. I haven't picked out something. Yet. You gotta find something. Then you're gonna have to a thing. A YouTube channel. I once realized <laughs> I was a bit strange, even stranger than I am now. When in about 2012, I once realized that my my name, Simon Barget, there was an anagram, and lots of anagrams, obviously. One of the nice anagrams of it to produce as a name was Otis Bergman. And I quite like that name. So it's just an anagram of Simon Barget. <laughs> but so I was thinking about that the other day. I could just change the change the whole name. Okay. Sounds kind of you know. It sounds like Ingmar Bergman. The, the uh... <laughs> so yeah, Barget. But there my grandfather go. used to say Barget or something. I don't know. It's, it's strange. Is it not a is fan it a of the surname? French background or German background or? It's Hebrew. Yeah. Hebrew. Oh, okay. Yeah. What is the Hebrew word? So Get was originally Gad, who oh, Gad. is one of the 12 tribes. And Bar is oh. something to do with from the rab, rab, rabbinical community of or something, son of a rabbi, oh. something like that. So Bar and Gad together Bar was then Gad. changed to Bar Gad. Yeah. Very good. Well, thank you. Thank you, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to see you as always. We'll go ahead and conclude the video. Thank you to the viewers for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Let me know what you think in the comments below, what you like to see in future videos, and I'll work on it. If you love Backgammon, you can become a member of this channel, giving you exclusive access to the most popular videos. Again, my book, Backgammon, Backgammon Strategies is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested in the lessons from me, my email address is in the description and I'll put a link to Simon's website. So if you're interested in lessons from Simon, you can go directly to the website. 
get lessons from him. I look forward to seeing you in future videos. And until then, keep rolling your dice.